Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're doing it. We're on. We are we're live. Doing, we're doing stuff. We're doing stuff. Uh, welcome, welcome, as always. Uh, Taggart and I are going, myself being Brandon, are, uh, we're going to be picking our brains, and you can be picking your own. You can pick your own. You can pick your friends. You can pick your nose, but you can't pick your friend's nose kind of thing. But you can pick their brain, which is what we're going to do today when we yes. talk about the question of the day, some triggered memories, and some new. New. The new. Things What's... for this week. Yes. Um, so, the QTOD. Question of the day. QTOD. Quad. Quad. Q. Q. Todd. Q. Todd? <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't. I don't think. It's oh no, it, it, it's I'm um, I'm I'm totally mixing that up. It would be Q O T D, quad to quad 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 da Anyway, question of the day. <laughs> it's like it's like saying like uh, you know the World Wide Web. It's like www. It's like you're adding so many extra syllables and you don't need to. <laughs> question of the day is fast enough, you know. Exactly. Uh, so question of the day. Is what traditions, like holiday or otherwise, do you still subscribe? And what tradition have you recently, like, like you've lived for however many years, and you've recently been like, eh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I feel fine about you that. Know, you know what, like. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, or I don't really want to do that this time, or anything like that. So yeah, um, so yeah, so uh, this could be in the context of, like I said, holidays, uh, like vacations, uh, you know, special events, like you know, sporting events or superstition kind of stuff. Um, anything that you do that's Superstitions. like <laughs> superstition. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, yeah, one of the one of the things we were talking about just with like the Easter holiday recently is you know how those the the symbols of Easter kind of got combined with the with the religious holiday itself, where you know however many hundreds of years ago or even just you know 200 years ago or 100 years ago it's just like hey you know we're having this festival at the same time like oh man like i got this invite for these two festivals man like one of them <laughs> is only like we could do them at the same time yeah it's like oh, i just hate having to go back and forth between these two things you know I'm finding eggs over here i'm singing hymns over here you know like it's kind of like, why can't we just d combine everything? You know, same thing with Christmas. It's like, you know, hey, we're going to we're gonna be celebrating this. Hey, we're going to be doing this. Hey, uh, my family likes to do like a Yule log. Is that cool? Like, <laughs> you know, you bring one of those. Like, is that cool if I just like, you know, hey, what if we like, what if we took this tree and like, you know, decorated it? It's like, but that's not really like kind of symbolizing what we what we would think it's like yeah but you know it, it could be fun and it, could it make it work smells really good you know it's super, pine needles point up to it's heaven super piney <laughs> we'll put a star on top how about that <laughs> <laughs> could it be an angel yeah sure <laughs> we'll put an angel on top whatever whatever works so yeah New eggs have to do with jesus yeah. Fine, we'll hide them. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Don't worry, there's a bunny. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so yeah. What uh, what tradition? What what is one of your good traditions? Like when you think of like, oh man, like you know Thanksgiving or Easter or Christmas or Fourth uh, of July. What kind of hall, what kind of traditions come to mind? Yeah. Uh... Well, let me ask you this. Let, let, <laughs> let's, let's refine this a little bit. Yeah. Between okay. you and your wife. Yes, sir. 
what I have one I have one and you you got you got two kids now so you're like you know kind of you know bringing them into the into the world's traditional stuff now or your own stuff what kind of stuff have you had to be like okay this is definitely what we're gonna do at, at this time yeah I guess most of that's been around around Christmas stuff mm-hmm We've kind of uh, said, forget all of you all for Christmas morning, and we're going to do that ourselves. <laughs> okay. Even though – Being you know, shut in for Christmas. I like it. No, no, no. Well, it's our family <laughs> together. And just for the morning, you know, it's – I don't know. Growing up, Christmas was more about Christmas morning than most of anything else for me and my family. And mm-hmm. so I think we kind of took that a little bit, but then said, but we won't see my family in the morning. So we've been trying to do that. I mean, I, I can't say it's worked every year, but we're trying to make the morning our thing. And I don't know if we have... Uh, any specific traditions as that goes, but we just, we open presents in the morning and we open one, uh, one thing that carried over from my family. We, we do open pajamas. Mm. Right. So. Yeah. We did the pajama thing for a while, but then it became just opening one present because we didn't always get pajamas. And then, yeah, kind of died. <laughs> But yeah, but yeah, I mean the pajama thing is is great. I mean, then you're wearing those pajamas on Christmas morning. What, what's your stance on taking pictures on Christmas morning, like of your your stack of presents, you know, you and your stack of presents, or any of that kind of stuff? Taking pictures? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's allowed. Right, but I mean, is it a necessary a no. necessity, as I should say? No, I do not. I do not. Uh, you know, you must hold up this picture, this thing, and we will take pictures of it. And mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. I'm not. No, I'm not really. I'm not really. Uh, yeah. There's a, I have a whole rant about pictures. We don't have to get into it. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tune in yeah, next week. It's, it's not necessarily yeah. <laughs> triggered memories. Yeah. What about all those hard drives of pictures? Um, it's just not necessary to like capture mm-hmm. every single moment um, that you probably will never view much again. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah I don't well, know. Because like, because uh, my girlfriend's family, she like they always that's that's their thing is they they open all their presents. And then they sit in whatever chair that they were, you know, sitting in or part of the couch or whatever. They have all their presents and it's all like laid out so that you can see everything, you know. And they take like one or two pictures like individually with each of those people. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Excuse me. Uh, well, it, what happened? <laughs> It's not yawning. like we're doing this in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah. What's the deal? Um, the only thing, like, now as, like, adults, that's kind of, like, uh, cool. But as a kid and looking back on those, like, you think about it, like, I, I love looking at pictures of me when I was, like, you know, um, it's, you know, I'm so vain. <laughs> like during Christmas and stuff, <laughs> because that's when you're like, Oh, that's when we got our Super Nintendo or that's when I we got those, like the like, big stuff. I get the big stuff. Right. Right. But like every little thing, like, no, I don't think so. Um, right. But, right. but yeah, like, especially oh, you got a book. <laughs> Let's not take a picture of that. Yeah. And that's the thing. I think, you know, pictures are supposed to be, yeah. Like they're supposed to be triggering those memories, not making, making them up <laughs> you know what i mean like, right well, what's so important about this thing you thought you had to capture this on uh digital video uh you know uh, 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 i don't know no, right it's on and, my phone i could just take one i just did it uh, and at the same time it's like a picture is of a moment it shouldn't be the moment or it shouldn't ruin the moment 
That's my big right. thing. So right, right, right. we can do pictures later, but still, like, <laughs> so what, what tradition? No. So what was a big, big tradition that you've done, like, year after year after year, that you just kind of sizzled away, or you made a conscious? What? No, not sizzled away. Like, obviously, that kind of happens. What one have you like consciously said? Nah. <laughs> Not doing that. Um, I had a couple answers for this, and I honestly will tell you that the one I was like, yeah, that's the one I'll talk about. It's gone. I don't remember <laughs> what that was. <laughs> Writing it stuff down. Time. I was like, Folks, nope. Uh, nope. <laughs> that's all right. My tradition is remembering things. I've decided a long time ago that I won't do that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, here's the th- Here's the th- here's the thing. Uh, well, while you're thinking, let me go with the, the traditions that I I still hold on to and stuff. So, um, oh okay, yeah. Uh, one of the one of the big things that uh, I really would want to do still is like uh, I would say like first day of school like pictures right yeah yeah first day of school with your backpack like at the door you know kind of a thing and it more or less it's 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 you know it's you should have certain certain pictures throughout the year and that is kind of like a time stamp on you know on your life right that's right. that's just what like, did you look like before yeah, you went in and, and like, decided that school was the worst but you were the first day you're like it's the best well we have so much fun i'm gonna learn stuff mm-hmm. and you get there and you're like my teacher hates me and i uh, some kid made me eat a spider i don't even know peer pressure uh peer pressure. you know <laughs> tough tough times man mm-hmm. um but yeah like you know, that's one of the big ones it's like uh because you should have you know, a school picture every year, like a professional school picture, you should have that first day of school picture. And then like, like that's about like, that's what I would say is minimal. Like you should be, you know, in case you ever get like, you know, kidnapped or something, you need some, like, what is the most recent picture? You know, what are we going to put on? Right. The, right. Uh, well, what are we going to put on the billboards or the, the you know, the, the makeshift yeah, milk yeah. carton kind of right. the milk carton pictures <laughs> and stuff but Do they have like milk carton.com where you can go and look at all the missing children that whole milk carton thing like it is it is so synonymous that didn't even run for a full year and it wasn't even countrywide it was literally like a campaign of like one or two dairies like in the midwest but it has become like one of the most synonymous symbols with anything. Like, you know, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Weird, yeah. Like, and they tried other foods as well, but like milk was just, they're like sitting there and they're like, oh, okay, what rotates enough in the grocery store to where, you know, it's not going to be like potato chips where it's like, oh, we found this kid like six months ago. And now, like, oh, those potato <laughs> chips are now just hitting the shelves. You know, like we we need right. to print, we need to print these, and they need to get out. And then if like they need to get in people's homes as soon as possible. And then they not to say that we shouldn't be looking for this kid if you know, but like if 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 he gets found or she gets found or whatever, we need to pull these milk cartons. You know, like the next day, just right. you know, kind of normal. So. But yeah, it, it was it was pretty bad failure. People didn't want to be staring at sad kids while they're eating their cereal in the morning. <laughs> so you're like, oh, these chairs are a bounce breakfast that this person can eat. Well, well maybe they can if they're kidnappers or not. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like and like, like Jerry, uh-huh. I mean, we're doing a little bit of you know stand up quotes in here. It's like you know. Like the wanted ads in the um, in the post office, like really can just check the guy behind me. If it's not him, then what can I do? 
like, <laughs> right. You're like, well, I've done what I could do. Yeah. You're like, Meh, well, that's, that's my civil duty right there. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, I definitely, I definitely would say school pictures, not a, uh, not a hard thing to, yeah. to keep it going. And then but that's good. That's good. I'm, I'm like, I'm always a fan of, you know, Christmas breakfast, Christmas breakfast, some yeah. sausage balls, some huh? pull apart be- bread, and, and yeah, and some orange juice, maybe a little grenadine in there. That's good stuff. Yeah, you did. Mm-hmm. I'm always, I'm, I'm, I'm always down for that a little special occasion breakfast. But Re- little brekkie. Yeah. But what do you got for what? What have you left in the dust? What have you been like? Oh, nah, nah. Man, I don't. Know. Uh, is it confession time? <laughs> I uh, I don't th- think I've made a New Year's re- resolution in a long time. <laughs> Fair. Uh huh. It comes around. I'm like, yeah, maybe I should do that. Ah, I didn't though. Um, and I think that we just kind of this year gave up on Valentine's Day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Valentine's Day for us. My Ooh, wife's yes. my wife's birthday is in the end of January. Mm-hmm. There's if it's a good birthday for her, there's no reason to have a Valentine's Day. It's like right <laughs> the next month. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, that's that's from her as well, not just for me. <laughs> But we have you uh, had a we good have, run. We, <laughs> uh, um you got here's the thing. It's it's ridiculous. We are about burned down on holidays about that time. Cause we got we got October, we got Halloween, we got November, we got Thanksgiving, we got we got uh, December, we got uh Christmas and then New Year's and then my wife's birthday. And do we really need to do a Valentine's Day? No, we do not. It's the end of a long run, and you know a lot of people are still like, "We're sad. It's the middle of winter, and we need something to celebrate." I just did that last month, so um, yeah, we didn't do anything for Valentine's Day this year for us. Mm-hmm. Like, my wife got our son some Valentines that he gave out at church and stuff, but he was like, uh, <laughs> what? "Yeah," but it was like I didn't get anything, and he didn't give me a Valentine's. Valentine. Thanks, buddy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, we didn't do that this year, and I didn't mind it. That's which is uh, which is which is pretty big since it's our first Valentine's Day. Ooh, this is a good story. So for our first Valentine's <laughs> Day, our first Valentine's Day, we were both working and busy. So we were like not really going to be able to see each other except for like five minutes on actual Valentine's Day. So beforehand, we made a plan that we would celebrate our Valentine's Day on that weekend, whatever it was, like Friday or Saturday. Right. We kind of, we made a plan. Like we talked about it. And we were like, okay, we're not going to celebrate this day. We're going to celebrate this day. Valentine's comes around. I do nothing because this is what we <laughs> planned. <laughs> and my then it girlfriend like, was. It sounds like when I was in sixth grade and lost my girlfriend. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> continue. I saved it. I saved it. But still. Um, but she was like, yeah, but today's Valentine's Day. You didn't do anything for it today. And I'm like, no, we planned to celebrate <laughs> On Friday, like, what do you mean? Like, of course, I didn't we do have anything. Post- we have we have pre decided to postpone this. Like, yeah, we're celebrating on Friday. I got time still, and she was very upset about it. And I was like, I don't understand the logic here. And then this year, we're like, let's not do it at all. So uh, you know, we've come a long way, uh, in a good way. We we've, we're good. really growing. Good, right. you've rubbed off on her. <laughs> No, I am. I am. We had plans. I am one hundred percent for the 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 negotiation of 
celebration, if that's something I can can term it, is basically yeah. like like, hey, push comes to shove. You know, I'm not Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Like, I'm not, <laughs> or I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm not, you know, Might not make like planes, that. trains, and automobiles. Like getting home for thanksgiving you know or christmas or what have you you know what i mean like if it if it doesn't work out then it doesn't work out you know it's just right. it's just kind of how it goes and it's it's not gonna be breaking little jimmy's heart you know little sally's gonna be like oh but he doesn't love us or whatever uh you know if we if you don't celebrate can I just say I hate Jimmy and Sally? I'm sorry. That yeah, I said. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. But I mean like that's like that's the thing. It's like, well, dad's not coming home for Christmas or, you know, whatever kind of a thing. Like I mean like right. don't don't call me cynical. Like I love the holidays. I love like the time off. I love to spend it with people that I care about and all that kind of different stuff. But if it's like But it means if the it's same breaking if you say, your back to do I can't it, get there. Yeah. Until two days after, let's do Christmas then. If people are on board, it's going to be just as magical. Yeah, exactly. You I know? mean, like, like the the to me, and this is going to sound really cynical, but again, it's it's more practical than anything. To me, the best part about the holiday is that it's easiest to spend it with people because you all have the same day off, right? Christmas right. Day, unless you work in certain fields and you know my mom as a nurse like you know some days it was like well we're waiting for christmas until mom gets home like you know kind of a thing right and stuff right. like that or like being on your mission or whatever kind of like because you know you and i both got back like in january right right like right, so right. it's like all of our stuff was like waiting for us and we had christmas like two or three weeks later and I don't know. Right. Did you guys do that? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember specifically. I told you I gave up on memory. See, yeah, but yeah. this is the thing. This is the thing. For me, it was like, hey, I'm not going to send in – or like I'm going to send stuff, but don't worry about opening it until you know I get back, right? And then right. don't send me anything because I don't want to carry more – I don't want to bring more stuff back, right? Then I'm right. going to just – unwrap and then literally just load right there in my uh suitcase yeah I don't and remember. so um so i didn't do that and then i'm sh and then my mom still sent me like a little you know a little care package full of like you know candy and stuff that i could just eat while you know that i was gonna have to so like that's the thing that's like the like you were saying with with your girlfriend at the time wife now where it's just like but you didn't do anything for that day and you're like but get, like get, we had a uh, there was an arrangement <laughs> like it's just that little Our like Valentine's well, Day is Friday. You need a little special something. I mean, you need something on the day of. And I just don't feel that way. Like if I celebrated, you know, nah. Christmas the week after, which is New Year's, but like the week after, and could buy <laughs> and could buy all the things on sale, and you know, don't have to right. fight like the holiday traffic and get a cheaper flight this way and that way. Like I'm all for that. Like I'm all for, I'm all for this. Reducing the pomp and circumstance. Is that the way is, that sounds really weird? Pomp and circumstance. Love it. Anyway. Perfect. The pomp and circumstance of the day itself. Right. And making it just more low key and enjoying the day, just however it be. And then yeah, man. filling all the rest of that stuff in later. Like, Oh my gosh, we don't have a turkey for Thanksgiving. It's ruined. Like t Thanksgiving is like the worst. It's like, no. You know, make homemade pizza or something, you know? <laughs> like yeah, like, like enjoy. We could do some yeah. melting and still be good. Yeah. For sure. So I think the biggest thing for me on traditions and stuff like that is, is yeah, like you know, what is going to work like if it if it completely eradicates out of practicality a lot of times it's just it's more hassle than the holiday 
deserves, if that makes sense. For sure. Like, I, I completely agree. Yeah. I mean, minimize, it, minimize. Yeah. It doesn't need to be if, crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy. If, if your kid is going to be like crushed because Santa didn't get him a turbo man, you know, like, and you're screwing every other thing up because you're trying to fulfill this one thing, it's like, no, that's not worth it. Uh, it's it's just yeah. time for him to learn the lesson that sometimes life doesn't work out the way he wants, buddy. Here's a really cool transformer. Yeah, you got it, buddy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, so yeah, so I would definitely say that a tradition that I've kind of moved away from, uh, like consciously, is just like having like everything happen on the day. Like everything doesn't need to happen on that day, <laughs> but right. a tradition that I would very much like to hold on to is still hanging out with, you know, your family and you guys like on those, on those occasions, you know what I mean? Yeah, making, man, making sure. the excuse and the appointment to be, be um, either at your house or you guys at our house and stuff like that. Cause that, you know, we don't play games every time anymore, and, you know, we don't... Like, kids you know, are lame, and they need to go to sleep early. I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah, 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 for sure. Well, we missed you on Easter. You guys didn't come. I was at your Dude, mom's house. We did nothing. It was lovely. We did nothing on Easter. We like You did? Oh, man, we had, like... Like, I, that's kind of where this comes from, is uh, we had shrimp... Uh, <laughs> Zo- shrimp zoodles like shrimp and zucchini noodles for easter okay. dinner okay so that's it, new yeah it was like nothing traditional like that maybe a little bit of easter candy we just had laying around and you know we 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 went to church and that was about it it wasn't anything like oh man it's easter we got to do this it was kind of like oh well what do we got well we got shrimp we got it we could just do that <laughs> Yeah, it was. It was sounds perfect. Man. It was pretty chill. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, with my stepmom and stuff, we had their little Easter dinner thing with ham and oh yeah, all that kind of stuff. Like two weeks ago, because she's oh, out yeah. of town. So like, yeah, I mean, had her little Easter egg hunt there. So nice, but but yeah. So, um, uh, one thing I will Nailed say it. about this. And yeah. that came up recently as well is like I said, there's a lot of tradition also with like holidays and stuff. Um, my friend does a podcast or a, a YouTube channel about uh, Disneyland. And okay, uh, when I went to like his panel at Salt Lake Fan X about their Disneyland po- uh, channel and everything, <laughs> his mother-in-law leans over and she's like, oh, have you seen the Guardians of the – have you been on the new Guardians of the Galaxy ride yet? And I'm like, I haven't did, been to Disneyland since 1997, so or 19, <laughs> 1996, so no. And she was like, oh, my goodness. Like, I can't believe that. And you're like, yeah, it is a tradition for you guys to go every year. Guess what? There's a lot of people that don't. <laughs> like, there's a ton yeah. of people. I don't know what if it is. Well, you went to – you went to Disney World in, in what, 1999? Was that 1999? Because you guys went when we were there singing, right? I don't. That was my junior year. I don't think so. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you guys were there. Uh, okay. We'll have to confirm this, but I'm pretty sure that you guys came to the restaurant, that spacey restaurant where we came out of the floor. Nope. Okay. Nope. I no. remember the story. I remember you telling me, I, are you talking about Disneyland or Disney World? Disney World. 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 I don't think so. Cause the only memories I have of Disney World is going with my dad when I was a little, little kid, maybe like really? five or so. And then again with my mom, you were not a junior. You, I mean, because I we were like, I was maybe seven or eight. And then we went, to, and then we went to Disneyland together. We got to tell that story a later date. That's a great, 
it's a great story. Yes. But yes. Uh, but yeah, I I don't remember going. I could have swore that you guys were there. I mean, it, it is possible, but I don't remember that at all. Like, Ugh. okay, because I remember like. I definitely remember getting the Ninja Turtle signature at like MGM and stuff because they just had stamps because they couldn't sign with those gloves. But I did get April Miss O'Neil's Big. signature and, <laughs> and Miss Piggy. But that's the thing. Nice. That's the last thing I remember. Like I don't. Huh. Okay. 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 I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe. I don't know. I, uh, 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 I don't know. Because you okay, you talk you're to your a junior, yeah. But yeah, but anyway, I haven't been to Disneyland. I know <laughs> since the '90s, so yeah, right. Well, that would have been late '90s, anyways. Even if it was, if you did come, oh, it would have been but like still. '98, yeah, '98, '99, something like that, yeah, right. So, um, but yeah, tradition. <laughs> Bless you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Whoa! They come in twos. They come in twos. So, so that was far away from the mic. So if that that was good. Exploded your ears. I'm no, sorry. That was that good. Was, uh, that was that was big. No, you did not spike it. So, speaking of sneezes, how about time for triggered memories? Triggered memories. Where we talk about something about that might trigger a memory. So hey, what you got. Uh, um, what was one of the worst things that you can remember about being in nature? Like nature. a camping trip that went bad or like that time you were attacked by a bear or, you know, something like that. What was the worst nature time for you? You weren't on that camping trip where – not Kelly. What was the other – what was his brother's name? Kyle? Kyle, was it Kyle that like saw the bear? Like, yes. Were you like Sean yes. and all the rest of them were like terrorizing him and like pretending to be a bear like outside his tent? He got so fed up, he ran away and literally ran almost face first into, into an actual bear. bear. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He came back and he. <laughs> When he came back, he like couldn't talk. He was like, and we're like, what? What do you say? He's like, bear, 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 bear. He's like freaked out, ghostly white. And we're like, I think he's dying. Yeah. Maybe he had a stroke, but no, he he was in shock. Basically, literally, like running a bear until you like stop because you almost like smack into him and then just retreated as fast as he could the other way. Like kudos yeah. to him for outrunning it or it not giving a crap. <laughs> yeah, I probably didn't care. It, it yeah. raided the – if it was the same bear, it had raided like the kitchen the day before or something broke in and ate a lot of food. Yeah. So I think he was fine. Yeah. But. Um. Memories, nature memories. Um Definitely, um, so yeah, there's a lot of camping trips and there's a lot of uh, hikes and things like that. But one of the ones that I specific, one of the things I specifically remember uh, being like totally freaked out and it was because like nature itself. So uh, probably about 10 or so years ago. Maybe, maybe not 10 years ago, maybe about like six years ago, something like that. Okay. I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to go and just be by myself on my birthday. I'm just going to just like be all alone, just like go on this like camping trip kind of thing all by myself. Right. So there's this okay. awesome mountain lake, um, not too far away that like you have to drive up the canyon and uh, you, you have to drive for like about two or three miles or no, it's actually, no, it's like six miles on an unpaved road. So it's like rocky and you're, you know, okay. you got to have decent suspension, all that kind of different stuff. So you go right. for about six miles and then you hit the 
trailhead of this hike and it's an old mining trail okay and it is a it is a mile and a half but it's like straight up so it uh, it's it takes you like a good 2 hours to get this mile and a half like it okay. it's like i mean if you're carrying a pack and all that kind of different stuff cuz it is there's some you know there's some shale and some loose rock and all this kind of different stuff so but at the end is so rewarding cuz there's this, this pristine crystal clear mountain lake and there's actually a cabin up there from the old miners and stuff and so you can just you know literally you don't even have to bring a tent you can just sleep in the cabin i mean the woods you know like floors been people have pulled up some of the planks for firewood and just if this that and the other but so my goal was to go up there every day after work for a week because it was okay. like you know uh the, the base of the canyon was probably about like five miles away from work or so and so i was gonna drive up there hike up sleep in the cabin hike down in the morning and drive to work shower go back back and forth back and forth and i was going to swim every day in this lake i went up the okay. first day did the hike not terrible you know with my pack and stuff then i was going to leave everything there well then i go to swim and it's like there's no one else no one else around nobody knows i'm up here not the smartest thing i understand <laughs> just in the middle of freaking nowhere but uh -huh. I'm in the middle of this lake, and at night it turns ink black, and yeah. it is deep. I mean, it's got to be twenty feet deep and yeah. stuff. And so, and it it it's, it's cold, yeah, and it's big. I mean, I was gonna swim there when I swam the mile, and it was gonna take. It's like about a half a mile across. So it, Golly. it is, or maybe like, yeah, I think it was like a, I think that one was a third. There's another lake up there that's about a half a mile, but it is like a third of a mile across. So it is not a jaunty swim. It is like you are, you are going for it. You are, you are swimming right. two thirds of a mile to get there on Holy one side of the back. Man. And so I was swimming <sighs> and I was going and it wasn't too bad, but I was just in the middle of this thing and I was just scared out of my mind like you can't see anything if you drown you just drown and nobody knows where you are <laughs> like i was just freaking out in the middle of this lake in my swimsuit just like treading water like just go back man just get back on land because <laughs> it is just it's like you know oh. i mean if you like well, i could understand the loch ness kind of thing where it's just you get out there and your mind just starts to reel with like possibilities you know oh and yeah stuff like that i mean it, swimming is so mental anyways mm -hmm. then and you get last thing you need is to get uh, into the <laughs> middle of a lake where it's you know uh however long of a mile each way and then you start freaking out yeah that's I was uh, so I terrified mean, and then like that night, like every little thing was like, you know, a cougar, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, like a rustle of this and this. And I just had my hammock. I was literally in this cabin in a hammock. Not that a tent is any kind of protection against anything. No. Was but, there, I mean, was there like a door that like latched at least? No, 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 no. Like this cabin's like 120 years old. So it's like barely so it's like a it's like a lean to of protection basically yeah like one of the walls is is pretty much gone because people use it for firewood and stuff like that so it it it's, it's pretty functional as like hey man this is where we're gonna camp and stuff like that but like uh it's 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 no kind of protection against anything but maybe some rain and stuff so you're just right. like you're just like right. oh my gosh and then of course it's pitch black at night you know when you're trying to sleep and everything and so my next idea was to create to to actually make a raft and to put my hammock on the raft and at least like float in the middle 
of the lake <laughs> at night. So I would just be like, for the next week, I would just be like floating, you know, and just be like, hey, man, a bear's not going to swim out and eat me or like, you know, a, like, a, you know, a mountain lion or whatever is not going to like, they're not going to do that. So at least I'm good. <laughs> Yeah, but that's not, that's not it. Hey, that's just not tips over. Your, yeah, exactly. It's not helping your I'm in the middle of a lake freak out <laughs> in right. any way. So you fall out. If that hammock breaks or you fall out, you're you're drowning, buddy. Yeah. Like you're having a rough night. Oh man. Least. No, yeah. If if the frame breaks and I fall in my hammock in my sleeping bag, I am dead. I'm just dragged to the bottom. <laughs> oh <laughs> like, no. So uh, so that, so then I got, um, got up the next day at like four and hiked down and got yeah. to work and everything. And the thing that kept me from going back, like I went back one other night, the thing that kept me was like, it was just wrecking my car, man. My car was pretty crappy. And I was just like, Ugh, oh, this drive. Yeah. The, this six on... miles, like 12 miles each way on this dirt row is just wrecking my car and and everything and so that was really it like i i was still freaked out and stuff but it's it wasn't nearly as bad um the second night too. but it was just like did you did you swim the second night yeah but i did it before dusk <laughs> okay <laughs> so, <laughs> okay yeah Oof. before the sharks would attack seriously you're like you, you, you don't even <laughs> like you're like you're, there can't be sharks but there could be <laughs> no no there's not <laughs> right like no, what is it gonna not. be like a giant octopus <laughs> don't say that man <laughs> like you literally i mean you just like it's your mind just goes crazy because it's just like yeah you man. don't know man you don't know because like it, it, that's what happens boom it's it's it, it happens and you don't even realize it Anyway, right. What is your 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 oh, man. wilderness adventure? Uh, well, one of my worst times was also one of my best times. So it, it, it is a grab bag, <laughs> if you will. Um, all right. So you know the story, but we um, okay. So it was my birthday. My parents. I'm like, what? I'm like 25 or something. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, a, I'm a man of sorts. Um, <laughs> I'm a man. I, I don't think- remember. I don't remember mm-hmm. exact time frame. But we uh, we go out. We For my birthday, they took me to this little open area, and we kind of hiked around. But it wasn't like a hard hike or whatever. We just hiked around. But we did a bit of hiking uh, around this little area, and I was like, oh, this is fun. And, and we got talking about Pikes Peak. And, uh, you know, and I was like, I've never been to the top of Pikes Peak because I want to do it right. I want to climb that mountain to get there. Okay. You know, okay. I want to okay. Zeb Pike this business and get to the top. <laughs> Zeb, you run! Right? Uh, so, so I decide. Such a my random reference. In October, <laughs> <laughs> all those Col- all those non-Coloradans are going to be like, who's Zebulon Pike? Anyways, um, so. Look him up. I decide on my birthday, which is in the middle of October, that I'm going to hike Pex Peak next week. So um, I call my buddy Nick, and I'm like, Nick, what are you doing on Saturday? He's like, I don't know. What are we doing? I'm like, yeah, that's right. We're hiking Pikes Peak. And he was like, okay. Because <laughs> Nick is game. So Nick is, we uh, – Nick can roll. That's for sure. Nick is game. Yeah. He's ready to go. So – uh, we wake up early, we drive up there, we get on the mountain like at 6 o'clock in the morning. Our plan is to hike up, chill out for a bit, and you hike back down. You were going bar trail, right? You didn't go up the incline. No, we're going straight bar trail. So mm-hmm. what that means for those who don't have never Pikes Peak, bar trail is like the main trail at Pikes Peak up the front side, which is the shorter side um, of Pikes Peak. Uh, and it's and it's like thirteen miles mm-hmm. the, hike to the top. The incline is a mile, which covers about half a bar trail, but it's straight up the mountain. It's straight, side. it's straight. It's, it's like stairs. It's yeah, it's the worst. Stairs. <laughs> yeah, a mile it's worth of straight. stairs. Yeah, yeah. It's 
Yeah. No. You do not hike the incline and then hike the rest of the mountain. That's stupid. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure someone's done it, but I don't like that person. <laughs> Anyways, uh, just kidding. I'm sure they're great. Ray. Um, it's Ray. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we get on the mountain. We're hiking up. About halfway up Bar Trail is Bar Camp, where if anyone's lived on, in Colorado and was in Boy Scouts, you probably slept at night in the cam- in the campsite there uh, in the cabin. Which is quite nice, actually. So, but it's about six miles up. Mm. Is about bar camp, so it's about halfway. So that's you're kind of marking that as the halfway mark. So we we hike up the first half real fast. So it's like six miles, right? And I'm pretty sure we got up to bar camp by like eleven. Mm, wow! So we were trucking the first bit. So we're feeling real good about ourselves. Like we, we're not really <laughs> tired. We're feeling great. We were like, we're going to crush the, re- the second half of this hike up. And then we're going to hike back down. It's going to be all downhill. It's going to be easy. We're going to do it real fast. <laughs> My so, knees aren't going to hate me because I'm 25. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you, you know what's up. So, <laughs> uh, so, so, uh, so everything's good. Then everything goes horribly wrong. So we we get past Bar Trail. We're hiking up, blah 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 blah. Right about where, right as we get past tree line. So there's a certain altitude where trees just don't grow anymore. Um, for those who aren't mountaineers, so we get we get up just past tree line. Flat earthers, and I mean that by people that live in flat parts of the earth. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. If you live in Miami, you might not understand that trees don't grow after a bit. Um, <laughs> so we get we get up past tree line, and I don't know how, I still do not understand. We lose the trail. We lose the trail. Yeah. It's a big trail. I don't know. I do not know. And they're like – you know, October, you might have passed one or two hikers, but it's 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 a very well worn trail. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, exactly, right. So there's not like, to your point. There's not many people on the mountain, right? So it's not like we're following people and we can see where they're going. So, but still, like, uh, really, I, I just think we got past tree line and then we were like, oh wait, everything is brown now. But we were following <laughs> the brown trail. Um, and we lost it. I, I don't know. We're smart people. I promise you. We lost the trail. So what do, what are we to do at this point? We've hiked, you know, I don't know, eight, eight, nine miles or something. Uh, we're not that far from the top really, but we can't, we don't know where the trail is. So we can go back. <laughs> we can, we can find, up. we just know where up is. Exactly. So exactly. So we just start hiking straight up. The mountain, um, which is a tough go, and now there's it's not really rocky or anything, but it's just steep. Uh, you know, we're not like climbing as like bouldering or anything. You know, it's we're walking, but it's a, it's, a, it's a steep incline. You know, mm-hmm. um, and the we get past tree line, and then we realize, oh yeah, it's October. The wind is strong and it is freezing. It's cold up here. I mean, <laughs> you've like, through many different climb, like C L I M E S at this point. Right, right, right. We started out and we we're like, it's pretty warm. We get up there and it's cold, and there are patches of snow starting to, to crop to crop up, and uh, and we don't know where the trail is, and we're hiking up this mountain. And this is when we start to get tired. We're hiking straight <laughs> up. And uh, this is why you half- don't do the incline first. <laughs> exactly. About halfway up our straight up climb, we just get so tired that we have to physically have to stop and rest for a few minutes and then keep going. Uh, part of it is fatigue, part of it is the wind is the worst. And it's really cold and bitter and like we're fighting against it to get up this hill. Oh, my gosh. So I don't know how long we hiked straight up the mountain, but it was too long. Um, <laughs> like it seemed like forever. 
this was the first p- part in the trail where I thought we probably will die here. Um, <laughs> so, so finally, I'm only laughing now. <laughs> I know. It didn't happen. <laughs> so we find we finally find the trail again. We cross paths with the trail as as we hiked straight up the mountain, we figured we got to run into it at some point. And we did. And we were like happy and we rested for a while because we were tired. <laughs> so, <laughs> so then we were like, well, we got to keep going. So, and right about this time is where we start to see, uh, we started to get some switchbacks up at the top. So we're getting really close to the top of this mountain. But as we get closer, there's more and more snow on the trail. Um, to the point where at the deepest, it was going like half up our calves. Like there, (laughs) there were, there were holes where people had stepped. So there's not like, it's not like it's encroaching on our skin or anything really, but, but it's, it's, it's good and deep. And we had to take big old steps with our tired, tired fatigue legs to, to to not get all wet and snowy. So Um, pause. Yes. What are you wearing at this point? I don't even remember. Um, like we figured it could be kind of cold, so we did wear some warm stuff. Now okay. I didn't. Now I didn't mention that once we got past Treeline, Nick was getting a little tired, so he figured he would leave his pack hidden somewhere, um, and grab it on the way back. Yep. Right. Try tie a ribbon around the old oak tree, like <laughs> style. So, so he's hidden his pack, figuring we'd be back for it. But then we lost the trail and all that stuff. So, okay. So I don't know what time it is now. Three o'clock or something. Mm-hmm. It's taken us way too long to hike this last bit. So we're we're it's, it's probably later than that, like four or four thirty or something. We're hiking up these switchbacks. The snow's getting deeper. Every time we get to the end of a switchback before we start the, up the next one, we have to stop and rest. And uh, <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> dude, it is. It, I, I, I don't know if I can like truthfully per- portray how scary – the situation was and how tired we really were. People are like, yeah, whatever, like you had to rest. We had to rest because we thought maybe we were going to fall down from being so tired. <laughs> like, like, you know, it was all mental, like the push to the next switchbacks so that we could rest. Like that was like our landmark. Like we will get mm-hmm. there and, and we will rest because otherwise we might die. So, um, so we we we're doing this. We, we've done quite a few switchbacks. We're getting closer. We're 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 dying. We're dying. We're dying. So at one point, on one of the switchbacks, the wind is so strong. I'm like, oh, it's gonna blow me over. So I laid <laughs> down. I seriously, and it, it was like it was gonna blow me over. And if it blew there me are over, no trees. <laughs> There's I know. Nothing. No, if it would have blown me over, it would have blown me off a cliff. Do you understand? Like I would have plummeted to my death. Um, so, so I, I didn't just sit down and rest. I laid down. I laid down on the switchback with a big rock behind me. I mean, I say big. It was big, long wise, not too tall, mm-hmm. not too tall, but it was big. It was a big rock. So I'm like, the rock's, right, the rock's not going anywhere. I'll sit behind it kind of with the wind pushing me against it. So I'll be cool. You know, it's going to save my life. While I am laying there, and this is not a joke. This is completely true. I am laying there. The wind kicks up a little bit from its already strong, ridiculous strength, lifts me off the ground a little bit, and scoots me <laughs> over on top of the rock part way and i go we have to go like I, I, oh, uh, if that rock was not there it would have lifted me up and dropped me off of a cliff like this is real life so we, we well it was like we gotta go so i rested on the rock for a little bit thinking i might die but the rest is needed so 
<laughs> so finally, we get to the top of Pikes Peak. It's like 5 p.m. Something like that. So it took uh, you six hours to make the last six miles. Yeah, like yeah, last seven miles or something. Yeah, seven it was miles, ridiculous. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It might have been a little later than I don't even remember. It was it was not good. Okay, we got to the top. Uh, it took us so long to get there that the visitor center uh, was open for about fifteen minutes when we got to the top of Pikes Peak. Which fifteen minutes we took sitting on a table, or at a table rather, in the visitor center until because our legs wouldn't work to stand us up and walk around and look at things. <laughs> so, uh, and they basically had to kick us out because they were closing, and we're like, uh, no. Now again, our, our plan is to hike back down. The plan at this point has changed. We, there's no <laughs> way we can't we can't stand up from a table. We're not hiking down a mountain. So, oh uh, goodness. So, and I to this day I don't know exactly how this all came to be. Somebody that followed up that came up the mountain after us, like there was somebody that hiked up after us. They seemed mm-hmm. fine. They must have had the trail the whole way, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, at one point they were like, talked to us and said, Oh, Hey, how are you guys doing? And we're like, Oh, we're dead. We're about to die. We're dead. We're so dead. We're dead. We're dying. Um, and they were like, cool. And they came back like five minutes later and they're like, Hey, I found you guys a ride down the mountain. And we're like, what? Oh, I did not, I did not hear that part of the story that randos ask other randos some random person was like we can't drive you down but we could get like and we didn't ask them they just like in their minds were like we don't have room to bring these people let's see if somebody else can take them and just like took it upon themselves to ask somebody which was amazingly nice uh because we didn't know what we were gonna do (laughs) you are in mobile at this point yeah yeah my next thought is how am I going to move a muscle? Not how are we going to get down this mountain? <laughs> um, and so we're like, what? Thank you so much. So this couple, this elderly couple who uh, hadn't been married for very long, uh, uh, was up there for their anniversary, had driven up to, mm-hmm. to see the views of Pikes Peak, and they drove us down. They were very nice. Um, <laughs> I was supposed to work that evening. Oh, you were doing pizzas. Yes. I was delivering pizzas. Uh, we may have got the – I don't remember when I was supposed to work. We did get up the mountain before I was supposed to work, and I was able to call them and say, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to make it. Um, and they were very nice about it. But, uh, but yeah, so they drove us down. And the ride down is down the other side of the mountain. So they drove us down the other side of the mountain, which was very fast. I don't the know why we didn't kill climb. I don't know why we didn't drive. So, anyways, we got down to the bottom, and and then we had some leg strength because we did have to like we not a ton. It was a little rough. We had to like walk back to our car, uh, the parking lot where our car was at, which was tough. But anyways, so yeah, that was the closest as nature's. Uh, had to killing me at this point, but uh, there was some serious thought up there that you know um, I was going to green boot it and die on that mountain. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. That that was long winded. So I hope you enjoyed it. Well, but, happy yeah. birthday. That was <laughs> yeah. Dude, but that I was like- a thing. Once we got down to the bottom of the mountain, we were like, we did it. We conquered that mountain. We didn't prepare ourselves. We didn't do the right things at all. We should have done slow up the top and not lost the trail. But we did it, and we were so We had no it. food. We had nothing. We left the pack. Right. What happened to the pack? Oh, so, so Nick had to go back the next week and hike the uh, seven miles or whatever it was to get to Treeline. Uh, where and find where he hit his pack, which amazingly was still there, and uh, and then he just turned around and went back down the way he came. <laughs> he was like, I'm not gonna go the rest. Uh, 
So, yeah. So he got all this stuff amazingly, but he had to come back and hike it again to get there, basically. That's like that, uh, it's like that rock climber that did like that speed climb or whatever uh, a couple years ago. I can't remember any details on who <laughs> or where or whatever. Okay. So, so you know who you know who I'm talking about if you know rock climbing and stuff. But he he did like a, a record uh, speed climb, and then he like celebrations and this that this that everything. Yeah, like um, uh, they left the equipment what? Uh, there, um, just like the the ropes and the the anchors and everything. And then a couple months later, he went back to like get his stuff, uh-huh. and um, he he was like, "Oh well, I bet I could do it again. Like not for like a record or anything, but I bet I could, you know, just do it." And then he fell, and since the stuff had been weathered over the last couple of months, he like fell and died. Ah, uh, because the anchors were no good like anymore. The, yeah, the they the rope tight. or whatever. Well, like yeah, the rope or whatever was like you know sun and rain and whatever oh, for the last couple dumb. of months. Yeah, it sucks. Dumb. But that, just Mick gets up there and he's like, "I could go the rest of the way." Nope, I'm going back. <laughs> no, I, he, I don't think he even <laughs> contemplated. He was like, "I will go to my bag. I will turn around and I will yeah, hike I will, down." Yeah. Trees are nice. Trees yeah. help against the harshness of the weather. So yeah. that's what happened. So no, that's good. Yeah, man. Nature's. I mean, don't mess. Don't mess with Mother Nature, don't man. Don't mess with Mother Nature. It'll get you. Yeah. So all right. What? Good. What is the new? What's 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 your new? We're we're already running on out here, so we got to be quick on the new. But uh, quick on the new. new. Uh, My new thing from this week is I went to Amarillo, Texas. I've been there once before, but I went there for this weekend. We played a couple of shows there, and I ate at the seventh, no, the third best (laughs) barbecue (laughs) joint in Texas, called as rated by. As rated by those people who rate barbecue places. <laughs> you know uh, who you are. <laughs> I mean, it was a magazine or a newspaper. I don't remember. But they uh, – Tyler's Barbecue, it's called. Shout out to Tyler's Barbecue. Uh, they had a lot of awards on their uh, walls from winning like barbecue competitions and like the best in Amarillo mm-hmm. competitions and things like this. Uh, it was very good. What'd you have? I had the two meat plate. I had some pulled pork and I had some shredded brisket and it was great. Uh, Mm. I had some Texas toast and some cobbler, some peach cobbler. And uh, and uh, and some beans, baked beans. Um, it was very good. And we took a picture with the man himself, Tyler. Who, Tyler, who works there and is still there every day. Tyler, and, who shall remain nameless. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't figure out his name, then shame on you. Um, uh, but yeah, so it was. It was actually it was pretty cool. Uh, I don't, you know, when you go play shows, you don't. Always get time to go and like see something cool or or enjoy the mm-hmm. local whatever. So, but we had seen some barbecue places and we were like, we should figure out what the best place is. We asked a couple of people and they were said you should go there. So that's where we went, and uh, it was delicious. I would recommend it for anyone traveling through Amarillo. Stop, eat some barbecue. Have some meat sweats and some bad farts for the rest of the day. You will enjoy <laughs> it. You will love it. Oh, the meat sweats. Oh, my girlfriend does not understand the meat sweats at all. <laughs> it's like, why would you do that? And you're like, Cause it's, it tastes so good. It's delicious. <laughs> it's so good. Just eat until you sweat it out. Oh, exactly. so good. How about you? Uh, for my new, uh, we just did uh, Salt Lake, or we did Fanex Salt Lake Comic Convention. Yes. yes. Were we supposed to have a panel this time, or was that is that going to be the next one? We should. We I got some research for the panel and such. Um, 
but uh, but it was they didn't have enough room, so they didn't have very as many panels, so we did not get a slot. Gotcha. This this time, or you would have been notified several yes. months ago. Yes, but Thank um, you. but yes. So our requisition is out there, but I got some good stuff that we can talk offline about cool. um, for that. Uh, the the panel that I wanted to really talk about though um was like we got we got to see john cleese john cleese was awesome and just the man was just on from from the get-go like yeah he's just like this was his first convention in north america like he has like a stand-up show that he's doing or whatever um so he was here And so he didn't really know what to expect and all this kind of different stuff. So he literally like, he's like, you know, 86 or something. Right. So when he gets on stage, we do like a picture, you know, of like the crowd shot behind him with their like cell phone flashlights. So it like looks like all these stars or whatever. Uh And then he just walks back off the stage, like back down the stairs and like the, the MC Chris is just like, no, 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 no. Like, no, like, Oh, oh! You're doing a bit, <laughs> like, like he just, <laughs> and, he, and he's he's sitting in like a director's chair, uh-huh. and he's just he you know just uh, you know saying some stuff, and then he gets up to do his silly walk kind of thing, like geriatrically uh-huh. and everything, right? The the silly walk, and then when he sits back down, the chair is like slides, and there was like this split second. I'm sure if you like had the tape and you like rewatched it you could almost pinpoint the exact moment when he goes, there is comedy right here where he just, as he goes to sit down, the chair slides a little bit. So he just keeps on pushing it with his butt and then keeps on scooting backwards with his feet. And so everybody's kind of like, Oh no, 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 no. Oh wait. (laughs) Like he totally realizes what he's doing. (laughs) And then he like almost gets to the back end of the stage, which is, you know, like, good four feet five feet you know Up, off the ground right and so like he goes and looks at the bed he's like oh and scoots his chair forward and then goes to do it again and you know everybody laughs when he starts to do it the second time and everything but i'm like this man is so genius that he just like instantly look like observe something and he's like oh i can make this funny you know let's go but yeah. at the same time but at the same time his um he he said himself, he doesn't know what's going to be funny. Like people they're asking, you know, about like, how do you come up with stuff or how do you guys know, or, you know, whatever. And he's like, he gave a little bit of his act or his, uh, his material for, from his standup where he's like, and I can't remember the whole setup and everything, but he's like, like his mom, like something, something, something. And it's like, and she never made anything in her life. It's like, except for a thing of toast. And he's like, see, I thought that was hilarious. (laughs) (laughs) And you guys thought nothing of it. And then he told this other bit that was like totally funny. And he's like, yeah, I just said that one time. Didn't think it was funny. And it kills every time. He's like, so you don't really ever know. You just kind of got to try some stuff. (laughs) <laughs> and it yeah, was, man. it was, it was awesome. So, but the that wasn't the one I wanted to talk about. Can I talk about one more? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the craziest one was Alice Cooper. Oh, did you the see the Cooper. Alice Cooper? Yeah. Okay. So, Alice Cooper again, who's like you know, very well aged and all this kind of different stuff. His life is so completely different than anybody else that has not like anybody else, like, because especially the fact that he's like, like he and like Mick Jagger and like uh, Steven Tyler, like those kind of people, like, like from being famous from so young to like being so old, like, and all of their friends died at the age of like 30 and stuff. Like, right. He was, about like how getting to 30 like was his biggest accomplishment (laughs) like living his life and being and being 30 he was like i'm done 
like I, I've I've outlived everybody's expectations, like all this kind Holy of stuff. Cow. But the the craziest thing was like this man, like when he was you know in his in his heyday and kind of like well just kind of building up, I guess he's hanging out with Groucho Marx. Groucho Marx. Uh huh. As his like. He's like, yeah, and Groucho was, you know, uh, he was an insomniac, so he'd call me at like 2 o'clock in the morning and just be like, hey, Alice, you up? It's like, well, I am now. <laughs> okay, come over. Okay. And I'd be getting out of bed, and my wife's like, where are you going? He's like, Groucho wants me to come over. <laughs> so he'd go over to Groucho and Mark's house. Groucho would be in his big old round bed like this big circle bed it's, you know a couple of cigars some food just watching a movie and he would just sit there for the rest of the night just you know like uh-huh like listening to groucho talk about stuff watch movies you know all this kind of stuff Holy cow. Like, after a couple of times you know groucho's like you like this bed it's like yeah he's like why don't you have it? So he's like, okay. <laughs> so he takes this big round bed and everything. And then after, you know, a couple of years, he's like, I don't know about this bed. This bed's really weird. Like this is kind of whatever. And he's like, you know what? Paul McCartney just built this like big, you know, circular meditation room. He's like, I'm going to send it to him. And he sends the bed to Paul McCartney. Oh like, my gosh. <laughs> so it's just like it's like this bed goes from Groucho Marx to Alice Cooper to Paul McCartney and he's just talking about like and I'm like, this guy's just name dropping it like he's just like, Hey, I went with Nick up to the you know, the top of Pike's Peak. Like, right. like like it's nothing. And you know, he's like, Yeah, Paul's still got that bed today and I'm like, Really? That bed's gotta be fifty years old. Like <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's been cleaned professionally. Uh, I know, crazy. seriously. But like, and like talking about like just all these celebrities and everything that he just, you know, hung out with all the time. And, uh, but he was the man to know. That's the other thing about it is since he was famous, like Groucho and Paul were famous to him. But on the other side right. of it, he's been more famous than everybody else he's he's met, except for Elvis. He was like he told the story when he went he like Elvis Presley wanted to meet him. Okay. So he went to Vegas and you know, he he went to the hotel and um you know, they patted him down, you know, made sure he didn't have any guns or anything on him he's like i don't know why they had tons of guns upstairs <laughs> like you go upstairs and there's <laughs> tons of guns it's like they he goes up in the elevator and uh i can't remember but he talks about the three or four celebrities that are in the elevator with him you know like all going up there and then he gets to the um uh, he gets to the top and you know pa- Elvis has got the whole top floor and everything, right? Uh-huh. Um, that's his penthouse. And he's like, it's like, he goes in and um, Elvis is like, yeah, good to meet you, man. Good to meet you. It's like one of the first things he does is he puts a loaded revolver like in Alice's hand. And so Alice is like, well, it starts to take the bullets out. And he's like, and this isn't fat Elvis. This isn't drugged out Elvis. This is like fit like you know peak of like his career elvis um so he's he starts to take the bullets out you know unload it and he's like no no no. he's like i want to show you he's like i want to show you how to take a gun out of a man's hand and he's like uh okay he's like so point it at me so he's like so i'm pointing a gun at elvis presley in the middle of his penthouse and the first thing is like shoot him (laughs) like just do it. Like when you like, you know, you're you're famous enough, you'll get away with it or whatever. And he's oh just like gosh. and then he's like he thinks about it, he's like, Well, okay, maybe don't kill him, but you know, shoot him in the leg or something. Like, you know, like just for the story. 
<laughs> but then after that's like good that that's, that's your what, first thought yeah <laughs> to make a good the, story the, he's like but the next thing like i realize is the gun's on the floor and i'm on the floor and his boot is in my neck right he just like did his karate and he's just like you know took me down and then he i get back up and he's like he's like here come into my bedroom i want to show you my prized possession he's like uh what <laughs> So he takes him into his bedroom and he goes over to like his uh, nightstand or whatever. And he pulls out this manila envelope, this like big manila envelope Uh and Elvis like hands it to him. And Alice pulls out like what's inside and it's like x-rays, like x-rays of bones and stuff. And Uh he's like, uh, however long ago, a couple weeks ago, it's like I went down and I was in the parking lot and this guy, like these guys that like, came up to me and they were like harassing me and like they, they, they wanted to fight. And so I told my bodyguards and everything to kind of back off. And I took on these guys. It's like, you can see here, this guy broke his collarbone. This guy, you know, I broke his wrist here. Here's a broken ankle. Like his prize possession was like, he's like the only interaction this guy has with like the outside world <laughs> with like the common people. Like, he wanted to keep these as like trophies, you know, like, like I've worked on myself, like with karate and all that kind of stuff. You think it's kind of like hokey, like everybody, like the, the Elvis impersonators are just like, hua, huh, 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 right. you know, and everything, but no, he like legit, you know, that was, that was part of his whole, th- his whole life was, you know, that karate right. aspect and everything. But, he, and, then Alice just talks about how sad the whole situation was in general. Like he's like, he was in a prison. Like it was the most elaborate, beautiful prison you'll ever see, but it was, and he could have anything he wanted, but the freedom to go out and just be among the people. And he's just like, yeah, if you're in a prison, no matter what, like for that long, you know, you'll try to kill yourself. Like, and that's what he did. You'll find a way to kill yourself. And it's just like, whew, like got a little somber Yikes. for sure. Yeah. But it was definitely like, man, like, like it was a very real glimpse into his life and how his glimpse like was in these other lives of these people. You know, right. it's not like I met this person on a movie set or I met this person doing this. It's like, yeah, I went and hung out with this person like in their daily life and, everything right. like that so yeah that would have, about... mm-hmm. would have been interesting would have been interesting alice is a very um smart well-spoken person mm-hmm. like he yes he can string a couple sentences together quite nicely so yeah that would have been interesting to hear him talk about some of that stuff yeah and so yeah like i said you know it's 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 got to be crazy to be like to be more or less one of the most famous people in the room, like your whole life, you know, right. that's gotta be crazy right. to be like, well, yeah, like everybody knows who I am, you know, and like I'm hanging out with all these famous people, you know, but right. Crazy. Yeah. Dude, that yeah. would have been cool. Yep. Whoops. Well, well, that cool. is it. That is the stuff. That's our time. Of legend. That's our overtime of legend. Yeah. <laughs> Legends of the Hidden Temple. Ooh, good stuff. All cool, right. Man. Well, keep it up. Keep it going. Do it up next week. And uh Yeah. Thank the people. In, send in those uh those lists of uh animals. <laughs> letter animals. There you go. Call back. So, Call back to last week. You got yeah. it. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Take care. All right. Sign up. Bye, guys. Bye.